Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode one, season two of the Frequent Answers and Questions podcast show. Uh, we're picking up right where we left off back in 2017. Um, this is a, I mean, this is just a wonderful show with friends where we talk about things. Again, my name is Matt Miller. To my left, we got Gregory Lloyd. Hello, everybody. We have Eric Nelson. Hey, yo. We have, see, I wish I could have said how many episodes you guys have done. I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to make it up as I go. Uh, Greg Lloyd, um, 51 episodes. Eric Nelson, two episodes. It's a good guess. <laughs> Nick DiCarlo. It's great to be back. He's Colorado's favorite dirtbag. You know, Probably 50 episodes. Yeah. Zachary Barberin. Hello, everyone. Um, I think Zach came in around episode 20, 22, early episodes. I was looking at some of our older ones and... It was like featuring Zachy B special guest. <laughs> so when we first did it, I was like, he's just going to be a one offer guy. And Damn. obviously you impressed us. He, he became yeah. a fixture on the show. Or, or maybe it's like after I even, I even edited it, we put it on YouTube, and I was like featuring, you know. So maybe I still wasn't impressed yet. And then, well, cheers. Happy to be here. Yeah. Um, those who are not here are pouring out on the curb for uh, Nicholas Holguin. Um, what was his... What was his name we came up with? Uh, av- opinion of an average person. Yes, the man who has the opinion of an average person. Um, and then Victor Carranza Jr., who was probably in episodes 1 through 22. Yes. And then, of course, oh God, how can I forget, uh, Nathaniel Bauman, who was in the later episodes. But, I mean, he has probably 20 or 30, I would say, underneath his belt. belt. Yeah. Um, we've, we've done a lot on this show. Uh Besides our regular podcast, we did like 10 extra episodes of random reviews of things like TV shows, movies, technology. I think David Bowie died and we did a random episode about him and that was a, I don't know, I got shit talk for not liking David Bowie because I said he was overrated. Wow. Have you guys ever had anyone say shit fuck? about you in the comments of a YouTube channel? Like, Why would you say that? that? I, I don't know. I just thought he was. Oh yeah. There definitely has. Um... What else about the show? I mean, I feel like, well, in general, like, what, what was the what's the elevator pitch for frequent answers and questions? We pose questions and then we answer them, and then sometimes then we we had frequently we had email frequently. questions too. Oh, right. We've done some mm-hmm. deep dives into mm-hmm. some topics. We, we uh, did a segment for a little while called "Would You Rather Yahoo Answers," where I would post something on Yahoo Answers and then I asked you guys the question and we tried to somehow we made it into a game show. Oh, we yeah, tried to yeah. guess. We tried to guess which segment. one was the most popular. Yeah. Um, some other main stains here I have. I was trying to come up with the, without actually going through and spending too much of my time. Uh, just looking at some of the things we did. Uh, Nick's soapbox, where Nick would complain about something. Uh, sometimes it was terrorism. Other times it was self-checkouts. Uh, we had shit news. <laughs> do you love me a soapbox? <laughs> shit news. We have a, That was a weekly news segment, which we'll, we'll do today. Uh, new tech, phone stories, politics, video games. Usually the headline was something shitty. We tried to never be positive. Um, <laughs> and now we don't have to be because everything is shitty. Well, I know. It's not true. Enough. Well, then it was like kind of fun. Now it's just like <laughs> depressing. <laughs> um, and then our gaming segment, in which we're going to bring back here, um, where we, I don't know, we just made something up. Um, I noted that uh, there was one uh, where I Googled Jeopardy for kids because I didn't want the game to be too hard for you guys. Wow. Um, <laughs> still was too hard. <laughs> and then I named the segment. Well, I mean, it, the the Jeopardy game, it was like a, a Flash game on the internet, but it was called Teen Jeopardy. And I was like, I'm just going to name it this, send it off on YouTube. And it's one of our highest rated episodes, and I think it's because it has the word teen in it. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> it got 4,000 views. Oh. Uh, other topics. Right. <laughs> yeah. I had a video of 4,000 views. We rated instruments. That was another top rated one. That was a fun mm-hmm. one. I was there for that. That one's sitting at 6,000 views, so that was our top. Oh. To be um, top. Most shows, at least later on, we came up with a topic of the show. Some of the ones that I just peeled out at random here. Uh, pet peeves. Things that we're bad at. What's so good about beer. How to deal with failure. And guess who will die in 2017. <laughs> <laughs> I think we had two right. Uh, yeah, well, Bill Clinton was the cover of the... Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's still kicking. I <laughs> really he proved died. us wrong, man. He was the uh, thumbnail. Uh, so just some more background info here before we get into the full we swing. We had Alex Trebek spot on just three years early. Yeah, God. <laughs> RP. 
Um, episode one of the pot of the fact cast came out on March third, two thousand fifteen. Uh, 62 episodes in total, not including the 10 random or so ones we did on E3, movie reviews, sword paintings. And Highest, coffee. And coffee, yep. Highest viewed segment, uh, which was uh, the hardest instruments to play, which was under 10 minutes, gathered 6,000 views. Nice. Um, some favorite quotes that I have from scrolling around. Um, they're not the best, but I thought they were funny. Uh, Zach, I'm sorry for this one. This is a quote for Zach. Um, I don't really remember what we were talking about. This is episode 50. Zach's quote was, I would like to just post one day on Facebook like, if you don't believe in evolution, you're a fucking idiot. But I can't do that because I'm sure I have family members who might be religious and they're all like, well, the Bible says this and the Bible says that. But I'd just like to make a YouTube video of me wiping my ass with the Bible. (laughs) (laughs) That's a good quote. Uh, We have some great bands. I remember that. It was a nice notice. (laughs) Do (laughs) not. Some great banter with other people. Uh, this is between Zach and Nick DiCarlo. Uh, we were just on the topic of are video games timeless or not. And Zach was saying that they're timeless and talking about like initially how he's never played Red Dead, but one day he'd like to. And he kept going back to that. And Nick's like, so Zach, you mentioned you want to play Red Dead Redemption one day. And he's like, yes. And he's like, and Nick says, well, what about Red Dead Revolver? And Zach goes, I don't know what game that is. To which Nick replies, well, it came out on Xbox like 10 years ago. And that was it. <laughs> that was it. A hard driven argument. Yes. yes. I still don't know what game that is. <laughs> well, it came out on Xbox like console. 15 years ago. Do you have anything, do you have anything else about it to this day? To it. Yeah, it's like the spiritual predecessor, not the story driven predecessor. That is actually 100% correct. Correct. Hmm. So, I mean, that's the crux of our show, ladies and gentlemen. If you're still here, then you're probably me just making sure that the sound levels are all right. <laughs> um, you're, you're a lifer. God, so initially we were trying to figure out, like, what do we do with shit news? Because there's just been so much of it. Yeah, we have about, as you say, 2015, we got about, I don't know, four years of shit news, and a lot of shit has happened. Wow. Um, what a crazy... Four or five years. Yeah. Like, yeah. What the hell? Or just crazy two years. Well, I'm sure we probably yeah, covered it at the yeah, time, too. but I think everything started to really take a turn for the worst when uh, a certain gorilla in a certain Cincinnati zoo got killed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure he was like a magic gorilla or something, and then now he was a time traveler. For now sure. we're just on the darkest time. Time traveler. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it's because that was the last piece of news that really wasn't like that was like fun. I'm not fun, obviously, but it was just crazy. But it wasn't crazy on the levels before shit got started getting fucking yeah. actually crazy. You know? Yeah. That was like the last like... It was, it was like... Yeah. It was the yeah, shallow end of the pool for crazy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. I think just the divisiveness was the biggest thing. Like, uh, I mean, no matter what side you're on, it, 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 things just got way more divided in the past five years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We already were having our, our school shootings happening multiple times a year at that point. Yeah. They had bombings and all that as mm-hmm. well. Donald Trump had kind of just become president. That was it. I don't know. But anyway, I guess the point of me even saying that is that's why we're skipping shit news and going <laughs> right into the topic of the show. Okay. <laughs> topic of the show. Shit news has been canned. Um, it's uh, November 21st, 2021. Should you buy a house? Zach, you just bought a house yesterday. <laughs> why? <laughs> ah! What was your reasoning? Um, you know, congratulations, obviously. Thank you. I think it was the right decision. I hope the housing market doesn't crash. Um, but yeah, I think the, the decision is just like, you know, get locked in paying one price because rent is just going to go up and up and up. Yeah. And, and rent is inflation is going to go crazy. Like it doesn't matter what side of the political spectrum you're on. Like inflation is happening. So if you're not like this year, if you're not getting a six percent raise, you're losing money. Like, <clears throat> so that's kind of crazy. So, yeah, that's the gamble that we took was to just buy. Um, it's crazy. I don't know. I feel pretty good about it. It's mm. a huge life change. <laughs> yeah, and just being locked in at that mortgage is a good thing because yeah, I mean, Phoenix, Arizona used to be a fairly inexpensive place to rent and cost of living but now rent is what 1200 dollars 1600 dollars 
for a a one bedroom, a two bedroom, it's expensive now. Yeah. Even for a just a one bedroom. low cost of living area such as Phoenix. So can we can we settle something once and for all? Yeah. What is refinancing? Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm gonna Google it after you give me the definition, but let's what just. I know of it. I'll start. <laughs> what I know is that it is taking your APR and either lowering it. Usually, it's lowering it so that you. Have That's your average purchasing return. Yes, I didn't know that, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> So it's lowering your monthly payments. What if you made that up? <laughs> what if it's not average purchasing return? I don't know. I, Do you, I don't know what it is. I don't, That's what I'm saying. I don't know what the actual that acronym is. Well, what did Dirtbag do? <laughs> you just made that up. Of, of course, I just yeah, made that up. Like you just it, made that was a fake oh, fact. Okay. Even still, just want to make that clear to anyone listening. listening. <laughs> we are smart enough to know that Nick made that up. Except for of course. No, no, he, he was right. He was right. Yeah. Eric said he would have caught it. <laughs> so, refinancing is the replacement of an existing debt obligation with another debt obligation under different terms. Yes, yes. The, Matt, oh, it's a lot Matt, more in short, in short, you're just getting a loan to pay off a loan. Yes. And it's just different terms. But sometimes refinancing could also be like, you know, with a house. You can, for instance, if you have a lot of equity in your house, mm -hmm. you can like, it's weird. You can take out a loan like on your house so like if you have enough equity you could just mm -hmm. you need like access like 50 grand you can like apply for that and then let's say if you own a you owe 150 on your house you just take out a loan for 200,000 which the bank is willing to do because you have an because you've already you yeah. have an assets that I mean I don't know if the math checks out on that one but that's just an example of like so what's the difference between taking a loan out on your house and doing a second mortgage I don't know I think a second mortgage I think a, I would imagine a or second third. mortgage is to where you just like your debt to income ratio allows you to take out another mortgage of like two, three hundred thousand, whatever it is. But you're basically still the just bank, owing the bank. Basically, of, when, yeah. when you go to when you go to apply for a house to like get a loan, the your lender will tell you like how much they're willing to give you based on how much money you make and based on your debt to income ratio, based on all of that, mm -hmm. how much money they're willing to like write you a loan for mm -hmm. so let's say let's say you know let's say the bank tells you you can they'll give you a loan for up to a million dollars but you go and you buy a house for like four hundred thousand you could I, I think the way that that's worked that works is like you could still you still have access to like there there could be a lender out there that's like oh yeah we'll give you a, we'll give you a loan for another four hundred thousand mm -hmm. you know what yeah, i mean exactly. it's all based on your debt to income ratio mm -hmm. What's yeah. the point of that though? Well, the reason if you, you have a lot of money, then like the bank is like, oh yeah, they can they can afford to pay this this like bill, this monthly bill, and they can afford to pay it. So like, yeah, we'll, we're going to sell them money, basically. Yeah, it's, yeah. Like, it's selling in the. And then, and yeah. then the main reason is like you know Tyler did it a couple years ago or last year because during COVID interest rates went down a lot. He so refinanced. He, yeah, mm -hmm. refinanced. Yes. Yeah. 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 And so. He got a way better rate, and so he doesn't end up paying as much in the end. And then, or if like your credit score goes up, then you can get better rates as well. So, but you also get more. I think I think you get more equity that way too, because when you refinance, then they're going to do an appraisal of your house, and so mm -hmm. then his house went from being appraised at like you know a hundred thousand dollars, and then all of a sudden it gets appraised for like two hundred fifty thousand dollars, something along those lines. You know, yeah. um, so. Yeah, which is good because then because then if, if they're saying that he only owes eighty thousand dollars on a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar house, then the rest is that other one hundred and fifty thousand dollars is all equity. Mm -hmm. huh. So in which counts towards like your debt to income ratio and everything mm -hmm. else. It's all weird, like I don't know, buying a house. Wait, so wait, I'm sorry, are you saying that like say you own twenty percent on a home that's worth, you know, a hundred percent, you know? And because the prices of homes, everything goes up two times. So you now owe, I mean, is that, I mean, I guess it doesn't, I guess it's still the same amount, but is it saying that you've paid off? It's not saying that you've paid it off, but when you're still 20 of 100%, but you're now 40 number you, yeah, of number. Yeah, exactly. Because when you, when you refinance, it's a different, it's a different, uh, like lender that's going to come in and that lender is going to base it on the value of your house mm -hmm. at that given time mm -hmm. for them to give you the, the loan. Yeah. So, so yeah, all of a sudden it looks like you, it looks, it's not that you've paid off that much. It's just, that's how much equity you have. Yes, exactly. Okay. 
Yeah, it's, I don't know, it, buying a house is a learning process, holy shit. But like, what's crazy is, is like, you know the saying, like, you gotta have money to make money, you know you know what I mean? It's totally like, oh because yeah. there's all these different like financial tools that I had no idea about that you can do that like, if you need access to some money, but you have an asset that's worth like, you know, you have an asset that's worth like $200,000, $250,000, whatever. You have $200,000 equity. You need access to 50 grand. People are willing to give you that because mm-hmm. you have an asset that's worth yeah. more money than that. So mm-hmm. if they needed to take it from you and sell it, they'll get their money back. So like, it's just weird. You can have access to like a lot of money mm-hmm. owning a house or owning assets. Wow. Yeah. It's weird. I don't know. It's a very strange system. I guess the <laughs> question I have, and I don't mean to derail us too much, is what is the reverse mortgage that Tom Selleck keeps trying to sell me on, and should I do it? I had a real question. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> so, so currently, we're, we're going up in our prices this year, going up, going up, going up. It's looking a lot like 2008, but as I've done my own research, which is what you have to do in 2021, Always do your own research. Do your yeah, own research. Yeah, on um, it seems the that the, the housing bubble <laughs> thing that's going on is not at all the same as the 2008 shit. And I want to maybe get into why it might not be or maybe why it is, but just stop me here on my breakdown of what I understood of this 25-minute YouTube video that I watched in the shower. The water <laughs> got cold. Um, Naturally. So the housing bubble that fucking happened wasn't because... People were just trying to sell a whole bunch of mortgages at a low interest rate, and it just didn't make any sense. It was because they were lumping together these mortgages and loans that people had with the banks, putting them into a category that you could basically invest in. So it was like they, were, they would set aside you know, thousands of, of these loans, and you could buy into the fact that these people are going to pay off the loans because of course they are. And then it went into different tiers of, well, eventually, I mean, you, like you want to buy of in, in, in the low, medium, or high tier, and they just basically bunched them all up based on people's, just the odds of them not being able to pay off their loans. So it would always be a good bet for you to go for the higher ones, but the lower ones, I mean, it's just another way to play with yeah. money on shit. And eventually, once the market crashed, everybody, even the highest ones, couldn't pay their mortgages, and then it all went to shit. Now... Okay, so first off, was that even close? Can anyone? I don't know. Yeah, that, that, that's how they do it. Yeah, they. I mean, that's happening even now. Like when I worked at Drive Time, we would like sell all our loans to banks and mm-hmm. stuff. So, but yeah, they and they tier them. Um, and but the main thing that caused the tw- 2008 crisis, I think, was the lowest tier or you know lowest and mid tiers were being rated way higher than they should have. So like people mm-hmm. who can't couldn't pay loans at all were still getting loans, and then. Once they defaulted on their loans, which they did, yeah. and that just caused the whole change. Yes, mm-hmm. yes because once they start de- defaulting on them, then like all of a sudden it's just like with stocks, like there you have, you have this like massive sell off of like banks are like fuck, because then all of a sudden they're 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 selling a, an asset that's two hundred thousand dollars and they're having to get rid of it for a hundred thousand dollars because exactly because if they if they wait too long they're not going to get shit for it. So they sell it as a, at a loss, and then you have that compounded, and then as that happens, it's like a it's like a it's like a runaway kind of effect. Like it just yeah. it happens, and, and it's like domino. It's a domino effect, and they it still got the government to buy them out. Yeah. But I, but it's weird because the government does back up some loan, like the FHA loans. But I don't know exactly how that works. But I think that's also part of it of like why it's like tied to the federal the feds some because like the feds are also determine like the the interest rates. Mm-hmm. So it's weird. I don't, I don't mm-hmm. know how it works. Finance is interesting. It's a it's a whole beast. A whole like. Self-sustaining economy. <laughs> but do we think that's going to happen again? Because this is currently happening based on people wanting to just continuously just invest more and more and more into the market, I feel like. Like it's yeah. Zillow buying properties and then that being able to let everybody else raise their overall rental rates and stuff. And it's just, I feel like it's almost a... Less people rent, less people owning, and more people renting right now yeah. because of an overall just well, lull that we have in our economy. I, and then combine that with the internet and yada yada yada. Zillow takes over. I think that we are. right now the housing market is so crazy just because like a supply and demand thing. There are a lot of people trying to buy houses and not a lot of houses to be had. 
Very, that's why very it's, true. Mm-hmm. That's why it's that seems so normal crazy. then. So then I will but, say that it sounds like it's okay to I buy a house. I don't think, but I, but no, I do I do agree with Nick. I and mean, I'm sure there's because, other because stuff happening. A lot of like, builds, like, a lot of new builds, one. like a lot of new builds aren't happening okay. because like the price of lumber and, and everything. I mean, you also just have the global supply the chain rates. as a whole. Yeah. Like it might it it might be a terrible time right now to buy anything expensive, like any mm-hmm. type of asset, because yeah. we're in this we're in this like. This like little I don't know like uh, like supply chains fucked up and uh, yeah on top of all that like we don't really even know like what the fuck cars, is going on yeah like buying a car right now I've heard is like a terrible yeah, idea don't buy a car like, there's like such I can sell my truck for as much as I bought for it I believe you ago. could I believe you could yeah man. that's crazy but partially because it's an old F one fifty work truck and only has a hundred thousand miles on it but still yeah <laughs> you, you get a bird scooter and exactly. scoot around. Like you yeah. did for six months. So, months. so I don't know. I mean, for me, for me again, the reasons are just like not wanting to deal with renting because I, I can see like, I can see this kind of like dystopian future to where like, it's really, really, really hard to buy a house and you know, all these companies are just like renting them out. So I don't know. It just seemed like, it seemed like a good gamble to yeah. take because you don't really lose unless you try to sell. So like even if even if we went upside down in our house or underwater as they say and we we owed more than the house was worth, we're still if we just continued paying our same price, we wouldn't really lose out. Yeah. I, I don't really see how that works. Like Well the way, the like way it works is there's just enough companies buying everything and it just like homes are just all owned by companies. Yeah. And they decide how it works and it's just a slow burn of you sell your house, it's a good chance that the company's going to give you a better offer than Joe Schmo is a real owner, and then it's just slowly one more here, one more there. Yeah, I don't know. And I, then, I then just, we're down to the last fucking blockbuster. I just feel like, in general, <laughs> it might yeah. be a good idea when, in periods of inflation, I don't even know this for sure, but I mean, who does, really? Uh, but it seems like, in general, in periods of inflation, you don't want to just, like, sit with cash on hand so like maybe getting mm-hmm. it in an actual like asset would be mm-hmm. and that was kind of our our kind of take on it but yeah i don't know it's a it's a crazy period of time because we're definitely going to be dealing with inflation <laughs> like yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, well, no matter what side you're on and just whatever your rate is just not being dicked around by rent too of every year oh rent's gone up four hundred dollars a year yeah oh I used to pay sixteen hundred. Okay, now it's two thousand a month on rent. And yeah. I do, yeah, I do I worry sure. about climate change in Arizona. I mean, that's something that I, I haven't really thought much about, like the last couple of days, last like twenty four hours. But <laughs> yeah, that's still a concern. I mean, like that's still kind of like what's what's the long term outlook going to be on the? Yeah, so it's November twentieth right or twenty first right now. It's seventy three degrees outside at yeah. at May eight <laughs> It's like lizards are still out. Yeah, lizards are still living. living yeah, so, I mean that seems a little worrisome. Like how how hot is uninhabitable? We should know this, but does anybody know this? Uh, like what if it starts? Because I think at some point it it is uninhabitable. <laughs> like of course yeah. it is. Like, yeah. but what is it? Is it a, is it like one hundred and thirty degrees? I think it's closer <laughs> to one forty. Like, right. and granted, it wouldn't be that all the time. But like, but like, at what point is like? At what point is Phoenix going to hit 130 degrees? Yeah. What is that, that Celsius? Happened, I feel like right? we, need to, we need to say no. what that is Celsius. Just for I the think fact we've only hit 120 most degrees. Celsius. What, what, what's, what's 140 yeah. degrees or 130 degrees yeah. Celsius? I'm get, wait, let's do you guess this before. I'm gonna guess I think it. it's like 50. Yeah, I'm guessing 46. Is, wait, 130? I'm going to say 52. 42. Yeah. 130. I'm going to say 61. Damn. 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 I'm guessing 54.4. 54? Oh, 54. Wow. Yeah. Well, on that note, ladies and gentlemen, before you buy your house, decide, are we going to be here for that long? <laughs> or should you probably just move to Mexico, hang out on the beach, and just wait get for some tequila, and burn you up. owned by The Rock, <laughs> fucking drink your days away. We haven't gotten there yet, but... We will eventually. <laughs> um, yes, we will. It's foreshadowing. <laughs> thank you for listening to part one of this uh, two-part episode. Uh, we'll be back right after a word from our sponsors, The Rock. <laughs>